Mexico and former State Department spokesman Nicholas Burns. He's professor of diplomacy and international relations at the Harvard Kennedy School of Government. And in Washington, former senior director and spokesperson for the National Security Council, former CIA analyst and MSNBC national security analyst Ned Price. Nick Burns, we'll start with you. And of course, also we have David Ignatius. Um, what are some of the consequences, ramifications, pluses and minuses of this move? Well, this is a major mistake. Number one, every American president since Harry Truman, Republican and Democrat, has faced this issue. And we're the custodian of the peace process. We're the likely mediator. All of them have said, we're not going to get ahead of the Israelis and Palestinians and make a, a big concession, a big determination on one of the final status issues. Number two, when the president makes his speech today, 1.6 billion Muslims are going to disagree. In the Arab world and Muslim world, it'll diminish our ability to work with them. Third, I fear there's going to be violence. Uh, we've seen this in the past on this issue of Jerusalem, holiest city for Jews and Christians, third holiest city for Muslims after Mecca and Medina. The Palestinians, very unhelpfully, are already calling for demonstrations. We're going to see demonstrations against American embassies and violence. And, and fourth, you have to ask this question, why now? This is a major concession by the United States, a concession that no president has made before. We appear to be getting absolutely nothing in return for this concession. So why, when there, even, there aren't even negotiations right now, there are, Mahmoud Abbas and, and Netanyahu are not working together, why make this concession now? I would say this is atrocious negotiating behavior by President Trump. So David Ignatius, we've been hearing now since the beginning of this administration that it's Jared Kushner who's going to bring peace to the Middle East, who's working on that process right now. Beyond this just being a symbolic fulfilling of a campaign promise that Donald Trump made, what does this do to the peace process such that it is or the beginning of any negotiation? You know, Willie, there really isn't a peace process to speak of now. Uh, what Kushner has been trying to do is get some other new uh, developments started. They have an idea about moving in Gaza with help from Egypt, the UAE, other funders, and to try to make Gaza, which has uh, always been the messiest part of the Palestinian uh, uh, territories, uh, something of a, of a showcase for development. They have an idea of working uh, with uh, friend, friendly countries in the Gulf, Saudi Arabia, the UAE, to, to in some way move toward uh, Arab uh, uh, recognition of Israel. I think all, all those moves, uh, which Kushner has been thinking about and working on, are going to be more difficult uh, because of this uh, Jerusalem announcement. As Nick Burns said, you don't really get much for this. What you lose is the uh, role the United States has played as, as the mediator, as, as the, the broker of negotiations that reserves its own judgment on final status issues, such as the status of Jerusalem, until the end of negotiations. That's really why we've been the convener now for 50 years of attempts to resolve this dispute. And it's, it's a significant uh, uh, loss of that, of that negotiator's uh, role and balance. Ned Price, uh, Jordan, UAE, Egypt, uh, what's happening in those capitals today in this increasingly and daily more volatile region? Well, Mike, I think that's precisely the concern, and that's one of the many reasons why it's been reported that Secretaries Mattis and Tillerson voice private opposition to this move. This is not a, an America first foreign policy gesture. This is a Trump first move, a move that is predicated on a crass political calculation and a crass political uh, pro campaign trail uh, promise. This will not make uh, the American people, diplomats, military personnel, private citizens safer in the countries that you just mentioned. And as we saw, uh, the consulate general in Jerusalem put out a very stern message, essentially telling Americans in that part of the world that they should be on lockdown. We have seen similar broad warnings from the State Department, warning of violence. This move will certainly lead to violence. Uh, the question is, what will be the ramifications of that violence and just how deadly it will be? Yeah. I mean, Elise, the, the image in my mind as the president is this massive drunk bull and the world is a china shop. This to me seems to have more in terms of public diplomacy implications than practical implications, just because this isn't, he's actually signing another six month waiver to keep the embassy in Tel Aviv. Yeah. He's saying he's moving it, but not really taking action necessarily to build a new embassy in Jerusalem and start that process 
of shifting operations. So I don't get what we gain other than just inflaming people. John, is this uh, yet another example of Donald Trump doing something, uh, signaling that he's going to do something that he doesn't really do, so he can fulfill a campaign promise? I, I think it, it full, clearly falls into that category where what he's interested in, again, we always go back to the same sort of touchstone, which is what's, what is, he feels incredibly beholden to, or, or he's constantly trying to go back to that 2016. What did I do? What can I, there's this base of people that put me in this office that overcame all the odds. There are things that he feels are core to that, to those promises that he has to at least look like he's fulfilling. So he keeps coming, no one at this, at this date, no one believes the wall will ever get built. And yet Trump continues to talk about the wall as if it's coming right around the corner. This feels like the same kind of thing where he has to pay lip service to it even if he d understands or is being told by senior people that do actually doing it would be either foolish uh, or Im or improbable impossible well and and the problem Mika, if you look at the warnings from the State Department and you talk to any diplomat uh, it makes everything we do in the Middle East all that more difficult I mean, and like across we the world that uh, we've got great